Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to be continuing with our Java programming tutorial series. And in this video, uh, we're going to be uh, covering conditional operators as well as if, else, and else if statements as well as a switch case statement. Now, let's go ahead and cover these conditional operators first. There are a few different conditional operators. There's the not operator, there's not equal, there's equal to, there's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. Uh, all of these have their own specific use cases. Uh, you'll find these quite often and uh, let's go ahead and get started with learning how to do this. So, so let's say, for example, we have uh, an integer, we're gonna call this age. And we set it to 17. And we want to test to see if the specific person with this age is old enough to is old enough to vote in the United States, for example. In the United States, you have to be 18 to vote. And we need to make sure that only people of 18 or older are able to vote. What are some ways that we can do this? Well, we could test if they're equal to 18. And how do we do that? Well, let's say we have a Boolean, right? Booleans, like I said, are true and false. And these, uh, these operators will spit out a true or false value whenever you use them. So we can, so we can put the value that gets spit out inside of a Boolean. We're going to call this is old enough to vote. We're going to set this equal to age. And in this case, we want to test if they are 18. So uh, to, set, to test if something is equal to something else, you would do the, you would do equals equals. And then whenever you want to test that variable value against, in this case, 18. So now the value of this Boolean is whatever the result of age equals equals 18. So if the age is 18, is and only is 18, then it will be true. If it's, if it's not, then it'll be false. Let's demonstrate that. So we can go system out print ln. Go ahead and do is old enough to vote in there. And let's go ahead and save it and run this. You can see we get false. Why do we get false? Because age is 17, it's not 18. So if we change it to 18, and we save it and we run it, we get an output of true, because they are uh, 18, because the age is now 18. However, we have a bit of an issue here. If we change this to say 19, because if you're 19, you're definitely old enough to vote. Go ahead and save it and run it. Let's see what happens. We get false. Why do we get false? Well, because again, 19 is not equal to 18, so it returns false. It gives it a value of false. Now, this is not the kind of result we're looking for when we want something like this. We could in turn say if you 
We could say, oh, you know, maybe we want to test if you're not old enough to vote. We could say if you're not 18. Right? So let's change this back to set to 17. Although 19 would have done the same thing, but that's beside the point. If we we've, if we then go ahead and save this and run it again, you can see we get true. Why do we get true? Because we're setting is old enough to vote equal to whatever the result of age uh, not equal to 18 is. So if the age is not 18, then it'll be true. This isn't what we need either. This, this is not what we want. Let's try something else. We also have less than or greater than, right? So if you are older than 18, so if you're greater than, which is this angled bracket here, where the, where the, I guess the jaws of the bracket are facing towards age and the, uh, the point of it, uh, the back end of it is facing 18. Uh, this age is greater than 18. If you're greater than 18, you will definitely be old enough to vote, right? So we have it at 17 right now. We can save this and run it. You can see we get false. So far, so good. If we change it to 19 and we save and run it, we get true because 19 is greater than 18. But if we change it to 18, we run into a bit of a problem. Save it and run it. Even 18 returns false. Why does 18 return false? Well, because 18 isn't greater than 18. 18 is equal to 18. So, therefore, uh, because 18 is not greater than 18, it will be false. This isn't what we want either. We could say, you know, we could say, we could use less than, I suppose. So if you're less than 18 in this case, so the jaws are facing towards 18 this time around, that's less than. This should work, right? So we go ahead and save it and run it. With age being 18, it's still false. Why is that? Because 18 is not less than 18. 18 is still equal to 18. But if we go 17, for example, we save it and we run this. It's true because 17 is less than 18. What can we do here? Well, we have two more uh, operators that we could try in this case. And that is the less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. So there's two ways that we could do this. That, that would work for what we want it to do. Uh, less than or equal to 18. This would mean that if you are less than 18 and you are equal, you know, if you're, if you're less than 18 or you're equal to 18, then it'll return true. Right, but 
if it's greater than or equal to 18. That means this will be true if age is greater than 18 or if age is equal to 18. So let's put this let's put these into practice like we did all the others. So if we save this and run this with greater than or equal to 18, you can see uh, with 17 we get false. What if we change it to 18? We can save it and run this. We get true. And the same will apply if we, you know, change age to anything higher than 18. That'll still be true. This is one option that we could do that works in the in our favor in the way that we want it to work. You could also uh, do, you can also change this to is not old enough to vote, for example, right? So is not old enough to vote and we could use less than or equal to 17 So less than or equal to 17. If you're less than or equal to 17, you're not old enough to vote. Right? Oh, okay, we have an error. I almost forgot I have to change the name of the variable that we reference inside of uh, our print statement here. Okay, there we go. Then, we save it and we run it. We still get false. Why do we get false? Well, because 18 is not less than or equal to 17. Let's say we let, let's change this to 15. We run this, save it as well. Now we get true because 15 is less than 17 uh, and then if we change it to 17 it'll still return true because 17 is less than or equal to 17. Now there are other, uh, there are other uh, conditional operators as well. Uh, and those are you those are typically used to chain conditions together and those are and and or so and and then there's or and is two ampersands and then or is like these two pipe looking characters I'm not sure what the technical term for those are but that's or so let's say, right, let's say you wanted, uh, let's say you wanted to assign a specific assignment, right, to, let's say you wanted to assign a specific assignment to someone uh, based on their age. or based on their grade, I should say. Their grade level, age level, whatever. So we'll say is allowed to basic sheet. So if this, this Boolean will be, uh, will define if you're allowed to do your ba a basic math worksheet like from elementary school. We'll set that equal to uh, to, a to a chain of conditions. We're going to use and first. So we want to so we want to test if your age is between the ages of five and eleven, and. 5 and 11 are inclusive. 
so we have to include them. So we're going to say, we're going to set this equal to whether or not age is greater than or equal to 5. And this is where we have our AND operator, 2 ampersands, like this, you can see. Um, and then we have our second condition here, uh, age. We also want the age to be less than or equal to 11. You could also just do less, uh, less than 12, but uh, in, a lot, in most cases, this will do just fine. Right. Typically, ands are good for are are making range are good for making ranges of values, uh, a valid value. Um, this can be useful for calculating uh, height, for example. Uh, if you're going on a ride, for example, uh, you could have a program that that you input the user's height, and then and it tests whether or not they're tall enough to go on a ride or something. Uh, that's just a, 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 that's a practical example. Uh, that's more, that would be used more commonly than something like what we're doing, um, but still. So with that, uh, we can go ahead and save it and run this. You can see we still we get an error because I did not change the value that we passed here. Is allowed to basic sheets. Right there we go. Oh, I put in I put an S. Okay, so we save it and then we run this. You can see it returns false because 15 does not fall between a five and 11. But if we go ahead and we say our age is five, that no, says five, there we go. and we save it and we run it, we get true. If we change the age to 11, and we save it and run it, that's also true. So that indicates that the range does in fact work on that side, uh, on that particular uh, condition. So, what about or? Well, or uh, basically basically says that only one condition has to be true, whereas and basically means that both sides have to be true. So both conditions have to be true uh, in order for the uh, in order for it to equate to true. So, let's say we change, let's say we change this entire program, we set, uh, we set age to 11 still, and we'll say if, well not if, because we're not covering that yet, uh, boolean, And we set this to is 11 or 10. This will test if age is either 11 or 10. Is equal to uh, age. We want to test if the age is equal to 10 or if the age is equal to 11. 
So if the age is equal to 10, it'll equate to true. If age is equal to 11, it'll equate to true. If neither of those conditions are true, then it will return false. So right now we have age set to 11. System out print ln is 11 or 10, just like that. We save it and run it. You can see we get true. However, if we change it to 13, and we save it and run it, we get false because neither of those conditions are true. Now let's change it to 10 and save it as well as run it and it goes to true. So that's how, uh, how we use our conditional operators. Now, uh, the most common thing that you'll find when you have these conditional operators is they'll mo mostly be used in if statements as well as switch statements. So how does that work? Well, an if statement is basically constructed like this. We use the if keyword, we have parentheses, and then we have opening and closing brackets, uh, curly brackets specifically. And inside of these parentheses is our condition. So, let, so we, let's go back to our voting example. We have int age, we're going to set that equal to 17. We want to test if this person is old enough to vote. So if in, inside of these uh, parentheses we put our condition, so uh, if the age is greater than or equal to 18, we want to do something. So system out print ln. You are old enough to vote in the United States. So if we save this and we run it, you can see nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, because age is equal to 17. It's not greater than or equal to 18. And in this sort of scenario, this is where we use else. Now, what is else? Well, else is basically something that tell that it basically tells Java, okay, if the above condition or conditions didn't equate to true, execute this code because nothing else can happen. So in this case, we'll say system out print ln, you are not old enough to vote in the United States. Just like that. So now, if we save it and we run this, we get you are not old enough to vote in the United States because the, because the condition up here uh, in the if block didn't equate to true, so it had to go down to the else block down here with our, excuse me, with our else keyword. Now, let's say we have more than one condition that we want to test, right? So, uh, 
And let's say we also have a an integer called percentage. So we want to so we want to determine what a student's grade is in a class. And this is based this is going to be based off my school system's grading system that might be the same as yours, I don't know, but Either way, it's an example to test out what we what we call an else if block. Now, an else if is just another uh, condition possibility. Now, you could say, "Oh, but what about and and or?" You could still you could still do it that way, but you'll have a very complex Boolean expression uh, assigned to a Boolean at that point, or inside of an if block at that point to where it's just not efficient. That is where uh, else if comes from, and that's also where switch switch statements come from, but uh, that's for later on in the video. Now, let's say, uh, first off, we wanna test if the user has an A in the class. So an A is anywhere from 90 to 100. In both uh, 90 and 100 are inclusive. So if percent uh, is greater than or equal to 90 and percent is less than or equal to 100, we want to say system dot out dot print ln you have an a in the class now this is where our else if comes in else space if and then inside of the parentheses we give it another condition if so else if percent is greater than or equal to 80 well 81 I should say and percent is less than 90, we will say system.out.println, well, 85, I guess, because 85 is a B plus. We'll say you have a B plus in the class. So, so far we have, uh, we have an A and a B plus condition. So B plus is if the percentage is greater than or equal to 85. And if percent is less than 90, and with that being said, I can also go else if percent is greater than or equal to 80 and percent is less than 85, which is a B. So, so if you're anywhere from 80 to 84, excuse me, uh, you have a B in the class. And else if percent is greater than or equal to 70, well, 75, I should say. And percent, oh, oh, oh. I almost forgot to spell it correctly in the, in the above condition. That was, that was almost dumb of me. Uh, percent is less than 80. 
that is a C plus, and so on and so forth. You know, you can keep on doing that if you really want to. Um, so we can, you know, we can go ahead and uh, we're just gonna copy some of this just because we can. And of course, my formatting is screwed up here. Right, so then this would be 70. So, okay, so yeah, A, B plus, 85, 80, 75 here. That would be a C. So if it's less than 70 and greater than 65, that's a D plus. You know, you, you get the idea. We'll do else if percent is greater than or equal to 70. So in this one up here, then it would be 65, 70 is greater than or equal to 60, actually. So 60 and 65, then that is a, uh, that's a D. And then anything less than a 60 is an F. Well, and I guess, yeah, so else, and then there's going to be something in there. So let's go ahead and grab these uh, print statements. So copy that. This is a B. This is a C plus. This is going to be a C. D plus a D and then this is an F and then this is going to be just an unknown because we don't know because at that point we don't know what the grade is so unknown grade Right, so that's our else if blocks. And you can see we have our percentage at 17. So with 17, that is going to be an F. You can see you have an F in the class, right? But what if we change this to, oh, a 69? Nice. Um, 
we go ahead and run it. Of course, my mouse cursor was a little bit too high above the button. There we go. Save it. And we have a D plus in the class at that point. So that kind of that's kind of how a how an else if block works um, in this scenario. Now with something like this, you might want to use a switch that um, because switches are a little bit less code, a little bit more efficient. Um, however, using ranges with a switch is a little bit a uh, little bit more of a difficult task than anything else. But uh, but you know that's that's a subject for another time. So now we move on to our switch case statements. Switch case statements are typically used when you have a, an absorbent amount of else if blocks and it's just not efficient. Uh, to do it that way. For example, when you want to make a choice uh, in a command line tool, uh, typically you're going to use a switch uh, because you don't want to use a constant, is this equal to this, 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 and it's just going to go on and on and on forever for how many, for however many choices you have, when you could just use a, sw uh, where you could just use a switch case statement. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's say we have uh, an integer called choice, and it's equal to zero. Well, we want to see, we want to test, uh, we want to test this upon our different options. So let's say we have choices zero, one, two, and three. There could be more, but we're just going to go with one, 0, 1, 2, and 3. You could go switch, and then inside of these parentheses, we put choice, because that's what we want to test. That's what that's the value that we want to use for our testing. And inside of these curly brackets, we, have, we put our cases. So case, and whatever we want to test it. So if choice is equal to zero, do something. So in this case, uh, we just want to do system out print line. You selected zero. And you have to do a break here because if you don't do a break, it'll just fall through all the cases and then it'll and then it will just execute the default. It won't do anything else. Um, it's it's kind of strange, but um, just put the break there and you won't have any issues. Um, if you have issues with a switch falling through to the final case uh, at all times, um, then you probably didn't include a break. That's probably your solution there. Now we have case one. System out print ln. You selected one. Then case two. System out print ln, you selected two. Case three, system out print ln, you selected three. Just like that. Make sure we put in our breaks before I forget. Boom. Okay. So now, now, uh, if we save and run this, we should get you selected zero. You selected zero. Good. That's exactly what we expected to happen. 
And if we change it to one, and we save it and we run it, we get you selected one. If we change it to two, and we save it and run it, we get you selected two. If we go with a three, we save it and we run it, we get you selected three. But what if we go something beyond that with say four? Nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, the reason nothing happens is because we didn't include what, what's called a default case. This is also equivalent to an else in an if else statement. So you type default colon, and then we tell it what we want to execute at that point. So system out print line, you selected something outside my parameters to accept. and just put a break here for good measure. Let's go ahead and save it and run it now. You can see we now get you selected something outside my parameters to accept. And that's, you know, that's basically how a switch statement works. Um, switch statements are usually use for when you want to test it um, if something is equal to something else and you don't want to do else if else if else if else if constantly with the same type of condition over and over and over again um, it's also the recommended way uh, to do it uh, so if you have if you have some have if you have a, a, an if else if else if block with a bunch of uh, testing if a certain variable is equal to something else put it in a switch case statement you will it, uh, you will f be much happier with it it makes your life so much easier and you know in in, in most professional uh, settings uh, in, in all professional settings for that matter uh, you'll be better off for it so that basically does it for this video on conditional operators, uh, if, else, else, if, and switch statements. I know this was a long one. I'm sorry. I just, ha I, you know, I had to make sure you guys got this uh, into your brains. Uh, if you still don't understand it, feel free to ask questions down in the comments. Um, if you, you, you know, you can also go out to Stack Overflow or GitHub and find. Uh, Java projects. You'll find examples of if, else, else, if, switch, all that kind of stuff um, in other projects. Um, you can also practice this on your own. And uh, yeah, so thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video uh, where we will be covering loops. See ya.